quite recently in the last, let's say, uh, five years, there was again a great attention to the problem of uh, the pathophysiological mechanisms that are characterizing the evolution of uh, multiple sclerosis. Uh, classically, we know that there is a relapsing remitting course followed by a secondary progressive course in, in about 90% of the patient, 10% have a progressive course since the onset. So two fundamental papers uh, in the uh, 2019, uh, they, they um, address the point that uh, most of the progression of, of disability, or if you prefer, more correctly, most of the worsening of disability that, that occurs in the relapsing phase of the disease is independent from relapses. And the definition of silent progression is being proposed for this type of evolution. Um, many other papers, quite a lot of papers have followed. And in most of these papers, the conclusion is that Multiple sclerosis is progressive since the onset because most of the accumulation of the disability is not related to attacks. Uh, what I did in my presentation was to highlight that uh, uh, there are some uh, uh, maybe possible false interpretation of the data that has emerged in the area of uh, the so-called PIRA, progression independent from relapse activity. And more specifically, when we pick up a confirmed increase of disability independent from attacks, we should be uh, absolutely certain that this type of increase of disability is not occasional. So it's not just an occasional phenomenon, not followed in the following years by other uh, increase of disability, because if it is just episodic, it is not an expression of uh, uh, the person entering the progressive phase of the disease. Second, uh, we have to have also uh, perform the longitudinal MRI in order to exclude that this uh, worsening of disability was related to some subclinical activity or maybe to the fact that uh, uh, because a long interval occurred in the ascertainment of uh, changes of EDSS, there was an amnestic effect about an attack. And finally, also, that we should always, in order to classify an uh, origin of disability independent from attacks as an expression of the person entering the uh, progressive phase of the disease, that such an increase will persist at the end of the observational period. Because only those increase of disabilities are confirmed and sustained could be considered uh, an, an expression of the uh, phenomenon of progression. If we do all this estimation, then the person with a true PIRA, so a PIRA which is confirmed, which is sustained, and it occurs at least two times during the observation follow-up. So the percentage drops dramatically. For example, in the first five years, it is of the order of about 5%. So it means that 95% of the patients do not have this phenomenon. So the conclusion that when we see a peer condition, automatically it means that the person is in a progressive phase is absolutely not correct. Second fu fundamental consequence is that not all patients will have to enter the uh, progressive phase of the disease. There are still uh, a quite large proportion who do not. And this is particularly true now that we have started to use more uh, uh, aggressive therapies quite early in, in multiple sclerosis. And there have been, for example, uh, some presentation at the Actins this year in Milan showing that 
because of this early and more aggressive treatment, the, uh, uh, the time the patient enter the progressive phase is uh, delayed and the proportion of patients is reduced. So to conclude, not all relapsing MS will evolve as a progressive MS. Second, the uh, ascertainment of uh, the uh, person entering the progressive phase is very important. Uh, and so it is very welcome, the concept of, of true PIRA, because it may allow to anticipate our time of diagnosis of a person moving from relapsing remitting to secondary progressive. And third, probably uh, because the mechanisms of uh, progression are uh, quite variable and they probably combine a different way from person to person and also the phenotypes in the progressive phase are, have some variability. Probably in the future we should consider to uh, classify progression uh, more in the context of uh, the molecular mechanisms that are responsible of progression.